Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Let me move this up real quick. Thanks so much for joining me today on this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're doing well. In this edition, I've got three things for you. One super simple, easy assessment. One super simple corrective exercise for helping your clients improve their walking efficiency. Because one of the things that drives me crazy, and maybe drives you crazy too, is when your clients, your, your clients' doctors or physical therapists or somebody tells them, hey, you know what, just go walk, you'll be fine, right? It's like, I've heard this so many times, like after clients have had hip surgery, right? Especially hip replacement surgery. Just go walk, you'll be fine. That'll strengthen your hip quite well. Well, let me ask you this. Did walking improve the hip prior to the surgery? So how is walking alone going to improve the hip after surgery? So when we think about our clients, especially our older clients, one of the things we see, obviously, is decreased walking speed. If you look at the research, the research clearly shows, or I should say clearly shows, it indicates that the slower, or I should say the faster someone walks, the better their sustainability, the longer they tend to live. Not the amount of steps they take, but the faster they walk. So faster walking speed, which also relates to walking efficiency. The more efficient they are, the faster they can walk. Hello, my friend, Steven Schmoltz fellow integrative movement specialist. How are you today, my friend? So one of the things we want to do is help our clients improve their walking efficiency. And the other thing that, you know, drives me a little crazy as well about walking and people's advice is, does walking ever get better just from walking, right? It's like breathing. Does breathing get better just from breathing? We've all been breathing our entire lives. We've all been walking our entire lives. Our clients have been walking their entire lives, most of their lives. Is there walking getting better or is it becoming less efficient? So one of the things you and I can do, actually we're in some of the best positions, I should say, one of the best positions to help our clients walk faster, walk more efficient, so they can live independent lives, so they can feel better, move better, do the things that they need to, want to, and ultimately love to do, like get down on the ground, get up, and then go run after their kids or their grandkids. And do the things that they want to do, travel and do the things around everyday life as well, just like going to the grocery store, things like that. So one of the things that we see with our clients is pelvis instability. And I don't like that word instability, so lack of control or suboptimal control with their pelvis. So one of the things that a client will do, you'll often see, so here's a quick, easy assessment you can do, is just watch your client stand on single leg stance. Just have them go single leg stance, see how stable their pelvis is. When you stand on one leg, again, it's not exactly what happens during walking, but it's a great way just to see how your client organizes their center of mass, which is somewhere around here, and then supports their, their center of mass or aligns their center of mass over their base of support. So what you want to see is when they get on single leg, they actually get a bit taller or longer, and their rib cage stays stacked over their pelvis. The pelvis stays relatively level compared to the foot. What you want to see or look for, evaluate for, is those shifts, especially a significant shift, shift to one side compared to the other side. So you'll see on my right side, pretty stable, pretty long, pretty stacked, not much excessive gripping anywhere. It's pretty easy for me to stand on my right side. As I get to my left side, you'll see I have to shift. I already shift my foot over more. I even turn my foot out a little tiny bit more to get my weight on this left side. And again, no problem standing on the left side, the strategy is definitely different. I have to grip a little bit more through my hip. My pelvis actually moves this direction. When you stand, when you're walking and you shift your weight onto single leg stance, your pelvis should actually go slightly like this. So as I get onto my right side, my pelvis should slightly raise on that right side as I get, as I start to shift my weight over this direction and then transfer to the opposite side. If we see our client as they stand, let me do my left side because that's the side I, I have trouble on. If you see your client as they step onto their forward leg, you start to see their pelvis go the opposite direction. They're doing this. Well, that means, or I should say part of what it could mean, they could have pelvis instability and or sacroiliac joint instability or a lack of control around the sacroiliac joint or pelvis. So what they're doing is they're over gripping their lateral hips. So those glute medius, maybe tensor fossa lata, even the lateral hamstring. So that way they're also shifting their center of, center of mass over their base of support. So then they start to walk like that. So you'll start to see this sort of weeble wobble type of gait appearance, real technical weeble wobble, right? You, you just see them 
shifting their center of mass over top their support leg. So if you don't see them maintaining that pelvis nice and level, or even that side they're standing on just raise up slightly, you don't want to see this. Like, man, that's too much. This, that's too much lateral pelvic sway. But you do want to see the pelvis stay, their pelvis stays relatively level and or slightly raises on their support leg. So for someone like me, I may need to do some myofascial release on this side because, again, these muscles are overactive because I'm not as controlled on that side. So once I've done my myofascial release, now i got to teach myself or my client how to stabilize better so when they're shifting their weight onto the side, they don't go right back to the same old habit because otherwise they just get up, you've loosened up their hip, but now they don't have the same level of control, so they're just going back to this position even stronger or even you know into, they're going into a, a stronger neurological pattern because again you just took away their tightness but again you didn't give them back any level of control so one of the ways we can give our clients back some better control through the pelvis and or sacroiliac joint and this is not to say your client doesn't need specific training from a physical therapist or chiropractor or someone trained in sacroiliac joint mechanics this is just something you and i can do as health and fitness professionals to start to train a more optimal alignment and control strategy around the pelvis. The split squat is really a great pattern. So once you've done your myofascial release around this position, or I should say around the hip, I should say around this position, around this hip, is teaching your client just how to do a split squat. So that way when they're loading up into the split squat, they're maintaining a nice level pelvis position. And as they come back up, they're learning how to come back up nice and tall. So from the front, they're coming down into their split squat, most of the weight is on the forward leg and then they're coming up without shifting this direction and or over gripping and shifting excessively into posterior tilt so we want to load eccentrically load really get them to teach them how to eccentrically load that posterior hip complex and then come up tall now we can make that a bit more challenging so now they have to control some rotation because again Walking efficiency is really about rotation. We'll talk about rotation here probably in the next segment or the segment after that. This is the part of our brand new series, Two Anatomy Geeks, The Anatomy of Walking. Rotation is a big portion of the gait cycle, meaning like when we step forward, we're, as our leg comes forward, we're actually counter, we're rotating the pelvis away from the forward leg, but as we start to move our weight over top, we start rotating our pelvis and trunk towards that support side. So controlling rotation, training rotation, and first controlling rotation is another big component to training gait. So we can just use a simple band. And again, it's better to start with a lighter band. Most of our clients never get above this band because we're mostly training older folks. When I say older, my age <laughs> and older, <laughs> I got a birthday coming up, so I feel kind of old now as I move into my near near mid 50s uh so so as we were working with our most of our, our general population clients most of them don't use bands heavier than this because most of them don't have the control they have the strength they just don't have the control to move a band heavier than this and also maintain pelvis and trunk control so the first thing we want to do is teach our clients how to align keep the head and neck that thoracopelvic cylinder aligned now they go into split stance position now the arm comes out straight. So now the band is pulling me. So again, it's a light band, but you'll still start to pick up when your clients don't control rotation. So now we're going to split stance, come up, and then the arm comes down. So now we're starting to work on that oblique chain, the deep, long deep longitudinal chain, which is that biceps femoris, the sacroiliac joint, the sacrotuberous ligament, the ligaments across the sacroiliac joint, and then up the opposite erectors. So it's a great way to teach our client how to control rotation and still maintain a nice, good split stance position. Really looks like a very simple pattern, but for our clients that struggle with pelvis stability, sacroiliac joint problems, rotational control issues, this is actually quite challenging. To make it a little bit more challenging and or, or advanced is you just go your reverse lunge and then step. Reverse lunge and then step. And when you're watching your client from the side, you should see them maintain that alignment of their thoracopelvic cylinder. They come up and control. You should not see them do this excessive rotation. It's just first teach them how to move and control the rotation from the band. And again, if your client is at this level, I don't train many clients like this, but for some of our athletes, we have to train this, is we will go to 
uh, reverse lunge, and then to single leg stance. And again, crazy challenging to do this, maintain pelvic stability, maintain thoracal pelvic cylinder alignment, and not change and have that light band. And this is why I start with a light band. Light band pull you out of that position. So great progression from a split squat to a split squat with a band to a reverse lunge to a single leg stance for your more advanced clients. That's a great way to start training sacral or pelvic stability, indirectly train sacral iliac joint stability. And if your client needs it, then maybe they need a physical therapist to help them more specifically assess and do motor control training around the sacral iliac joint. But again, if you do the right myofascial release, the correct releases around the hip joint and or around the spine, then teach your client how to control the pelvis, control the thoracal pelvic cylinder, control their hip, knee, ankle, and foot, and then move around that forward leg, you've given them a great strategies to start to improve pelvis stability, sacroiliac, sacroiliac joint stability, as well as start to progress them to more efficient walking. And that's really how you help so many clients with chronic issues like hip tightness, knee issues, you know, so that inefficient gait pattern, help them walk more efficiently, walk faster, and really enjoy getting back to enjoying walking and doing all the things that they need to want to and love to do. Hope you enjoyed that series or this session <laughs> of the series. It's going to be a continuation. Next time we're going to talk a little bit more about the ankle and foot as it relates to walking. And then we'll talk about more about rotation as well, or maybe we'll do that next week as well. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down below. And if you're interested in learning more about the anatomy of gait and how the pelvis, the sacroiliac joint, how the rotational chains work during gait and how to improve gait and walking in your clients, check out Two Anatomy Geeks. Jill and I, every other month, this is actually March, so this is the third, can't believe we're already into the third month of the year. It's actually a great month. Days are getting longer. My birthday's coming up. My wife's birth, birthday is coming up. And uh, spring is right around the corner. Clocks change back here pretty soon, so it's a great time of the, of the year that way. So this Saturday, we're starting a brand new series of Two Anatomy Geeks where we're looking at the anatomy of walking, how to, how to assess your clients, how the anatomy applies to walking, how you can use simple assessments and corrective exercises and exercise progressions like we discussed today to help your clients walk more efficiently so they really get back to enjoying walking. They can walk faster. They can, they can do the things they, they need to and want to and struggle with. You know, we were working with some clients the other day that were just like, I just can't walk as far. I can really get around the block before my back is just killing me. So these are some strategies that you can use to help your clients really move towards that walking efficiency. So we'd love to see you. It's a three-part series. It's this Saturday and then two additional Saturdays. It's about 90 minutes to two hours each session. We record all, all the sessions so you can watch the recordings. If you can't jump on with us live, we have a question and answer. So if you have questions, you can always write them in and we'll answer your questions. It's a great community of positive, like-minded individuals, health and fitness professionals just like you. They're really just looking for strategies and solutions to help their clients, their everyday general population clients really live better lives and more sustainable, healthier lives. So we'd love to have you as part of our community. The link is somewhere around this video or up, up, up above and or below this video wherever you're watching it and if you have any questions like i said put them below this video and we'll answer those questions and we'd love to see you this saturday to anatomy geeks the anatomy of walking we we'll look forward to seeing you and if not i'll see you next week on We'll continue this series, part two of this series about helping your clients walk better. This is Dr. Evan Osar. And check out our website, our brand new website, I believe is going live this week, Discover IMI. So Discover IMI, Integrative Movement Institute. So check that out. We've got a lot of great stuff coming for you this year to help you be that resource for your current clients and attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of our community and allowing us to be part of your community. Go out there and be the light for your clients and really be a positive force that brings people together and really gives them a bright part of their day, especially for those individuals that are struggling and, you know, we've got a lot of stuff going on in the world. Just be a light, be a positive role model, lead by example, bring people together. Thanks so much for all you do. Take care. This is Dr. Evan Ozar.